Good day, a good day to you. Once again, we are here with that invincible faith. Whilst the world suffers and is terrorized, we are in the perfect peace. Yes, faith, the intelligent faith, the faith which leans upon the Word of God brings us peace. But now, when you take, and you see on the newspapers, on television, the internet, magazines, and you search, you search for news with regards to the evil, to the evil which coronavirus is doing in the world, it's obvious you will absorb the thoughts of evil, the thoughts of the devil. Because this is how Satan operates. He leads people to doubt. Just doubt, just fear. Doubt brings fear. Doubt brings worry, anxieties. Doubt brings terror. Doubt brings weakness, disabilities. Because whatever comes from doubt comes from hell. And all the news, all the gossips, which bring up worry, fears, terror, comes from hell. However, contrary to what the world presents to us, we have the biblical information. The information which brings faith, which brings the teaching of faith, the practice of faith. We have heard, we have heard many people speaking about the coronavirus, coronavirus here, coronavirus there, and we are here to speak about the corona faith. Corona faith is the opposite of coronavirus. It's the corona of faith, of faith and faith. Just look how God stimulated his servant, Joshua, to conquer the promised land. Just look. In one of the word, the scripture in which God speaks to Joshua, he says the following words. Let's read the scripture. He says the following. God spoke to Joshua. Be strong, which means put all your strength, all your intelligence, all your knowledge, all your potential, all your energy. Be strong, be strong and of good courage, of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only, only be strong and very courageous. So God three times says be strong and courageous. Three times. Three times God speaks to Joshua with regards to conquering, inheriting, the promised land before crossing the Jordan River to take possession of it. God encouraged him. God stimulated him to believe, to trust and that which he had promised. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Just look how wonderful. So God is stimulating the faith of a man who would lead the people, the slaves, to become a nation when they would conquer or obtain their promised land. But the secret of Joshua was this. He told them, that he should observe to do according to the law, do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. So then here is the secret to overcome the coronavirus or corona doubt. 
for you to use Corona faith. Corona faith is the weapon which God has given to each and every one of us in order to take possession of that which he has promised. And he knew that today we would need this intelligent faith because the world is getting worse and only those who walk by faith survive. So it is an exercise, a daily practice of your faith, of your assurance in the word of God, which is fulfilled in our lives. So friends, faith is what makes us to be strong. Faith in the word of God is what makes us to be strong. However, many people have faith and they are weak, debilitated, sick, weak, poor, needy. Why? Because the faith they have is a natural faith. The natural faith is the faith which, for example, I, uh, I follow a church or a religion, I'm charitable, religious, I'm a good person, I do no evil against anybody. So many people maintain this kind of faith. Oh, I do this, I do that, and I do the other thing as well. But the faith God gave us and gives us is not just a natural faith. God has given us a supernatural faith which comes from above. A faith which does not depend on the circumstances. Nonetheless, the supernatural faith, it opposes the circumstances. It goes against. For example, the coronavirus, the corona doubt. Why? Because it's a faith which comes from above. It's a conviction, an assurance which comes from the Holy Spirit. So you who hear me, watch us this moment. You who are watching us, pay close attention. Do not allow yourself to be led by a natural faith and try to conquer the benefits of the supernatural faith because it won't happen. It will not happen. You may be an official of the church, you may be a pastor, a bishop, a pastor's wife, you can be whatever. But if you use, if you use the natural faith to confront the coronavirus, you'll fall. To face the coronavirus, you need to use the supernatural faith. The corona faith, the supernatural faith. And this is why he left for us his thoughts. The thoughts of God give life, give strength, give courage. And his spirit leads us to make this choice. The choice of the intelligent faith. And not to live in emotion, in fear. This is a practice you need to exercise when you read his word to meditate because through his word comes the supernatural faith faith is wonderful so you verify you know this is important because when we speak about sacrifice people immediately think about money they are thinking about money and what they will lay on the altar and this is what hinders faith, because faith is not money. It has nothing to do with money. Although, when a person manifests faith, he does not only place money offering or sacrifice on the altar, he places what represents his life. Because pay attention. The Bible has many symbols. For example, the cross is the symbol of our redemption, the sacrifice of our Lord. The bread is a symbol of the body of the Lord Jesus. The grape juice symbolizes the blood of the Lord Jesus. The menorah 
is a symbol of the cross. The symbol of the seven spirits of God. The Ark of Covenant, it's a symbol of the presence of God amongst His people. The Temple of Solomon is a symbol of the presence of God amongst us. So when we deal with it in this manner, we verify, we confirm that the offering is a symbol of our lives. Because when a person, when a person believes, he sacrifices because of this faith. Faith asks for this. Faith requires this. Faith itself. Because you don't have to prove anything to God. No. Because God already knows all things. But when you manifest faith with sacrifice, you are proving to yourself, to yourself, and to the devil, and to the problem you are facing, that you believe in the Word of God. So, when one puts faith in a sacrifice, that sacrifice, that sacrifice, shows and proves to him, to himself, that he believes. And this is dependence, complete, total dependence on God. So, for example, it's simple to understand. I've spoken about this, but I will repeat once again. For example, faith and love. They have, they match, they walk together. In our case, for example, when we like, when we had that affinity from one to the other, so love was born, the feeling which we call love, this feeling of love could not be restricted to kissing and hugging. We wanted to live together from then onwards for the rest of our lives. And it has been for 48 years. So we had to give up our freedom. You gave up your freedom. You had to give up the comfort of your home, which your parents would provide for you. You had to give up everything you had at home when you were single. And above all, the freedom of going and coming in order to be attached to me and be stuck to me, tied to me, to wash my clothes, to iron, to cook, to take care of the house, the children, sacrifice in the, in the name of love and the sacrifice you did because of the love you had towards me and vice versa. I used to work just for myself back then. When we got married, I began to work for me and for you on the double. So I had to sacrifice. We faced challenging moments. We fought. Nothing was easy. I know what it is to eat. To eat from the container just off of, you know, those small containers. So I know what it is. But what is this? We sacrifice one for the other because of the intense love one had towards the other. So the love which united us obliged us to sacrifice in order for us to be together. And, to, and until today we sacrifice. We sacrifice one for the other. So this sacrifice is what keeps this love living. The sacrifice we make one for the other is what leads us to have peace. Because we, our love has no doubt, no fear. We remain together. This kind of love does not have envy, does not envy. There is no distrust, no such thing. We do not distrust one another. 
If you say it's a stick, it's a stick, I believe. If it's a stone, then it's a stone. If you say it's a stone, that's it. I don't have to prove to you that I love you because you know this. Love is a spirit, which is the spirit of God. You feel the spirit. We feel the spirit. Faith as well is a spirit. And God was the first to sacrifice. He proved his love to us when he sacrificed Jesus. It is what's written. But God so loved the world, which means he proved to the world that he loved it in such a way that he offered his son. He gave the, his sacrifice. He placed his son on the altar. God placed his son on the altar to save me, to save you. Because he believed. He believed in us. And he did his part. When we do our part as well, then we are proving that we believe in him. So the offering is just a symbol. Because God does not need money. God is the owner of it all. He's always been the owner of everything. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. When we express faith in this invisible God upon his word, for example, I, confer, I, I believe in, I trust your word and you be trust in mine. If you say something, that's it. I don't have to be proving what I said because you know I'm not a liar. And I also know you're not a liar. So there's no distrust amongst us. There is no envy because we have this conviction of loving one another because one sacrifices for the other. Faith in relation to God. When we believe in God, we sacrifice our lives fully. It's marriage as well. It's a holy matrimony. It's a covenant. The same way he sacrificed his son for me. I also need to sacrifice my life for him. So it's his offering for me and mine for him. So it's an exchange of offering. He gave his life for me. And he gives. He gave his life to me and I give mine for him. It's like offering. Offering is like a present. When you choose a present for someone. You evaluate the weight that of, of love you have towards a consideration you have for that person. I personally, for example, would not give the best present to someone I do not know. I will not give a physical present. I'll give, but not the best. I would never do that. So if I will buy you a present, I'll seek the best, the best for you. Because the degree of love I have for you is the best, is the highest. The same is with the regards to God. It's so holy, so sacred. It's so sacred. Offering itself is so holy that Jesus speaks about this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23. He says, if you bring your offering on the altar but then you remember you remember that you have your brother has something against you leave that offering before the altar which means don't put it on the altar you need to leave it before the altar go back ask for forgiveness Fix yourself with your brother, reconcile with your brother, and then come back and present your offering. Here it's written. So Jesus says that the altar sanctifies the offering, but it only sanctifies the offering which God accepts because a rejected offering which does not symbolize the life of a person is does not accept it has to be a hundred percent it has to be one's life in full this is sacrifice if you bring your offering 
to the altar. And there you remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar, which means you cannot place it on the altar. Go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift, which means it needs to be pure, sincere, and with that interest of pleasing. It's the manifestation of faith. The manifestation of faith is like the manifestation of love. Why do people get married and divorced? Because they prove that they don't have love. Because when one does not have true love, they get divorced. They don't sacrifice. You only see when a person loves the other when he is truly sacrificing. Why is it that you who say, oh, Bishop, I wish to be like you, like Mrs. Esther, you have a marriage like this, but you need to sacrifice. If you don't sacrifice, how will you want to have marri a marriage like this? Because we sacrifice ourselves until today. Until today, we sacrifice one for the other. Literally, we sacrifice. Because Esther has her tastes, I have my own. In order for us to match our tastes, we need to sacrifice one for the other. Likewise, it is with regards to the relationship with God, faith with God. In order for your offering to have value and bring the answer from God and calls God attention unto you, it's sacrifice. It's sacrifice. And then people say, oh, but you're removing from, you're taking from the poor. What does the poor have to give? He has nothing. But when he climbs the altar, even if it's just two insignificant coins, he climbs up the altar with the faith he had. He climbs up with what he had, he has. Money is the physical. But what is in the heart to please God, to prove that he is the Lord? So tomorrow, tomorrow is Sunday, we will have the campaign at the pool of Silam. If you don't have this readiness to sacrifice and truly please God, to truly sacrifice. So it's best you don't even do this because you will do it half baked and it won't solve. It's only solved when there is a true sacrifice because in the power of sacrifice is faith. Behind that sacrifice is faith. So then if your sacrifice is half baked, your faith is half baked. So obviously nothing will happen. But if your faith is total, no, this is what I want to do. No one forced me. It's what God is touching me to do. And I will do what God is asking me and I'll do it. Then yes. Your faith is being manifested and obviously God will honor. So it is important for a person to learn. When we speak about love, marriage and the relationship with God, faith, it's specifically to illustrate for people to understand what is faith, what kind of faith. Because when a person comes with a sacrifice, he does everything, he even sells cans to raise money and place it on the altar, is showing that he truly believes. And God sees this. The world does not. The world does not see. The world simply criticizes. But when a person believes, he doesn't care what people say or don't say. He goes in his own faith. If I were to give attention to the voice of the world, then we wouldn't be here. When we got married, we married at the limits, living at the limits of sacrifice. It's true. But the love was so strong, was 
is and even became more solid. We did not measure effort to give the life of one for the other. And many people say, oh, this is not going to work out. Oh, shame. This young man, even her godfather, look, look there, look there. You see? Do you see? Do you see the who he is? He said to you, you're going to lose your life. Look at his face and look at my face. It's good to notice this. Look at my, look at his face and look at my face. Just look. I'm not here trying to criticize him by no means. It was his faith. He didn't have faith. In this marriage, what can I do? That's his problem. But I had. He was a bishop. Faith is like this. It's of what is hoped for, not what you see. At that moment, we had no conditions to get married. But by faith we married. And he did not have this vision which God had given us. That he would honor our act of faith. Looking at this picture, Esther, I see the following. Everything we speak about which he said to you. He said no to you. No, really, you got to have a lot of courage to say, audacity to say that. Esther's bishop, a family friend, he used to go to her house and then he said, don't do this. You're going to waste your time. Was it not so? He said he did not see future in us both. Although being a pastor, he did not have... He had his faith, but not faith in us. We both knew that financially we couldn't do it, but faith prevailed. He did not have faith. The faith he had was a personal faith. My faith was my faith. Each one has his own faith. Just as he had the faith not to believe in me, I had faith to believe in myself, and I believed, and I believed in you too. And God honors us when we manifest this faith. So friends, this is so important for you to carry in mind, to bear in mind. The supernatural faith has nothing to do with the natural faith. The supernatural faith comes from above. Comes from the spirit of faith who is the Holy Spirit. And when the spirit touches here within us. It doesn't matter whether the entire world comes against us. And this is our faith. So nowadays, as we, as these days, we are facing this pestilence, which is going around the world, leading the world to bow, to kneel before this pestilence. But we are not. We are in peace. Faith, Esther, the true faith, the supernatural faith makes us to have so much assurance, so much tranquility that we have peace. We are in peace. We're attached to that verse, that Psalm, thousand on your left, ten thousand on your right, but you shall not fall. Of course, before the facts, the majority are fallen, prostrate, humiliating, humiliated, running, fling. But those who are of God, those who have this exclusive touch, which is the faith the Holy Spirit gives, these are standing. These are standing. These are in tranquility. These are in peace. It's what the Word of God guarantees. If you want this assurance, my friends, the first thing you need to do is to isolate yourself from the corona doubt. Isolate from the corona doubt is for you not to give credit to 
the evil doubt brings through this plague which is running through this world are you firm in faith do you have the spirit of god are you sure are you certain of the spirit of god so in this entire world which this entire problem which the entire world is facing it shows the difference between those who believe and don't believe there are those who do those who don't as the word of god says once again you will see the difference between those who believe and those who don't this is the time so i always kept this principle every time we face problems we we lean upon the word of god and we run back to that which god said here it's written lord you promised you gave your word so this word cannot fail god is faithful i might even be unfaithful but never by no means will he ever be unfaithful it's impossible so friends give ear to the word of faith read the bible it's as someone said bishop how can i have faith read the bible the more you read the bible the more faith you will have and less doubt it's like this let me tell you let me explain to you when our faith is at the bottom is down the doubts are at the top so you lose the battle because doubts are here they take your mind and lead you to be afraid desperate anxious it makes you to be worried it makes you to be looking at the circumstances but when a person receives faith when he comes to the universal church of the kingdom of god every day he receives a dosage of faith every day faith grows at the same time doubts drop so the person feels better it gets better 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 until when faith is in the same level with doubt so then he has control over the situation and eventually the faith grows every time more and doubt disappears this is how it works so this is how your life is when you are in faith when faith is here above you are well but when you are in doubt it's the opposite your life goes from bad to worse so you enter an environment of doubt and you get involved with that doubt you become desperate you enter an environment of faith as the case of the church of the lord jesus the kingdom of god the, the church of the lord jesus is the kingdom of god when you enter this bubble of faith which is the church so then your faith grows and this is the reason as to why many people live in doubt although believing in god because they do not attend the church or come to the kingdom of god or rather the kingdom of god is not inside of them because they seek to live faith at home these are people that say i'm not going to the church anymore i will cultivate my faith in god at home so he reads the bible but the holy scripture teaches that faith comes by hearing the word of god faith comes by hearing the word of god hearing in the sense of you hear when you read you hear and practice if you hear which means you read but you don't obey then it, then you do you don't practice then you this is how it works and there are people who say bishop i want to go to the church but i can't i'm a, willing to do anything or go anywhere but i'm i'm discouraged to go to the church because the faith of this person 
is below zero. It's at the bottom of the pit. Obviously, he needs to sacrifice. He needs to sacrifice. The least he has, he has to sacrifice in order to reestablish his communion with God, his relationship with him. So this is how faith is, friends. Faith has its mysteries and secrets, which are only revealed to those who read the Word of God. Those who read the Word of God, who thirst and hunger for justice, for truth. And for this, a person needs to be humble. He needs to be humble. He needs to read, hear the Word of God, and practice it, obey. And here's where sacrifice comes in, obedience. At times, a person is worried with what people are saying, what people will think. So he ceases to obey because of others. He does not think that God is speaking to him to obey. He has had this privilege of hearing his voice. But they don't obey. So, my friends, this plague of the corona doubt is running throughout the world. You know that when a person is so afraid of a plague, what does he do? Although not having anything, he goes to the hospital, an emergency room to for an examination. And when they go to these places, they get contaminated by it because people there are also searching for an evidence whether or not they have it. So friends, if one lives in faith, he has peace within himself. He is sure. He knows whom he has trusted. He does not feel. He knows. I know whom I believe in. Is it not so? Is it not so? When we know, not feel, but we know. It's the intelligent faith. Because he knows. The emotional, the natural faith. The person feels. He has to feel. He has to see to believe. It's not something on the outside. It's something inter in internal. You and God. And this war, this conflict between the corona doubt and corona faith. It's within us. And each one has to defend himself. Each one has to defend. How do we defend ourselves? When we hear the word of God and we apply it. It's here, my Lord, you promised. So a person leans upon the word of God. He becomes strong. So he is strong to overcome his battles in his thoughts, in his heart, in his mind. So when someone comes and shares bad news with regards to the corona doubt, what happens? He's already vaccinated against the corona doubts with that corona faith. This is the faith. This is the faith which we have lived and we pass to those who want, those who believe. This is according to those who believe. So as Jesus said to the disciples, go into the world and preach the gospel to all creature, to everyone. The Christians, Catholics, Buddhists, Muslims, religious or non-religious, to everyone. He who believes, he who believes and is baptized, which means it's not enough to say, I believe, but he needs to commit. He needs to be baptized. He'll be saved. He obeyed in the sacrifice. And it says, he who does not believe is condemned. There's no way out. So friends, see your life. Evaluate your faith. Weigh your faith. Instead of giving ears, you know very well that 
the news, the media lives off of information. It needs to give information. The media needs to give information. It's the work of the media. So if there's no information, nothing more interesting. They put out whatever there is available. And then comes this disaster, this despair. They're in China where it all began. In the city where the coronavirus began. There it's already declining. There is no more. This curse is no longer affecting everybody. It's already diminishing. They've already contained the situation. This will happen throughout the world. However, those who like noise, they are, they're worried. They are sharing this. Of course, you will be careful. You'll be cautious. You wash your hands. Keep them washed, clean. It's a matter of hygiene, even even because many people don't have don't have it. Even without the coronavirus, you need to have your hands washed. So, friends, give attention to the word of God. Do what God told Joshua to do. Look, Joshua, do not look neither to the left nor to the right. Only be strong and very courageous, which means put your strength upon your word. Put your mind upon my word. Follow my word. The same way Moses taught you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go, which means conquer. This is the promise of God. Let us do what God told Joshua to do. Instead of you reading God speaking to Joshua, put yourself there. Mary, listen, Mary, be strong and of good courage. John, in summary, that's for all of us. We need to put our names there and follow this word in order for it to prudently be one may prudently take possession of this promise and the promised land God has promised to us. This is the faith we believe. If you believe, let's go. If you don't, shame. If you don't believe, I'm not here to convince you to believe. We're here to preach the gospel. He who believes... To him who is revealed, then the Lord of the hand, the arm of the Lord will be revealed, will be ex stretched out. Those who believe, we will help them. If you don't believe, then stay behind. This is the faith we have passed to people. And we also want you to absorb this faith. And it's not alone at home. You need after hearing this word, being in the church and the congregation, that you may have the strength to obey. Because many times that which is asked from you is too strong, too strong. But because of this spirit which is strong inside of you, guiding you, you know, and you say, I will do it, I will obey. So if you have faith to go to the church, go. If you don't have faith, don't go. It's a simple thing. Each one take his own de decision. The Universal Church of the Kingdom of God will be open in order to attend to those who believe. Those who believe will be blessed. Okay.